Hello YouTube, this is We All Juggle Knives, and this is the Battle Horse Knives Workhorse. I was contacted by Battle Horse Knives about reviewing one of their blades. I checked out their website, I will include a link. They have many different models and they are all customizable. Of all the stuff that they had to choose from, I chose this design, the large workhorse, basically because I think the blade shape is extremely efficient. Uh, I just think this is one of their best and most well thought out designs. As you can see, it's a high saber grind. There is the bevel. It is stone washed. The blade is four inches in length, sharpening choil, full tank construction. This is 01 tool steel. I chose the orange G10 handle scales because the orange is go going to be easier to spot if I were to set it down or drop it. As you can see, it's a neutral handle. It's not overly contoured. That is how I prefer it because it gives you flexibility of whatever grip you need to use, but it does flare out, right, for uh, better retention. All right, so that is the, you know, a simple, efficient handle that I prefer. Has an extended tang with a generous lanyard slot. As for the blade shape, it is classic and efficient. It's very pointed for starting cuts. It also has a um, generous curvature to the belly for slicing, skinning tasks. It has a bit of a guard here to choke up, a ricasso there. It is uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch in thickness, which is an intermediate thickness. Gives you strength and lightness. All right, before I start doing things with this, I want to show you the polished edge that it comes with. This comes with a polished edge as if you had like hand stropped it lovingly yourself, which a lot of you will do. But this already comes with a highly polished edge. Just reduces friction, protects it from rust. It'll make it glide right through whatever you're slicing. So very nice job on that edge. They have several sheath options. This is the option I chose. It is the Kydex. They also have leather and they also have sheaths which can uh, accommodate uh, your fire steel as well. Right, but I chose the the more tactical Kydex, of course. And very good sheath. It retains it efficiently. It's completely silent. And it has this part here to push off. Right, so it's very easy uh, to deploy the blade. Snaps into place. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice sheath. like it quite a bit. There's the belt loop. Now on YouTube, we are a little bit biased as a community towards larger, heavier blades simply because a, a large hatchet or an ultra-heavy machete, it's just more sensationalistic. You can show it batoning big, huge pieces and chopping things. Uh, and, you know, it's just more cinematic. But do not underestimate a moderately a moderate length blade. Most bushcrafters I know prefer a fixed blade of around four inches in blade length. So I did not choose this model arbitrarily. Four inches in blade length, it gives you enough to work with, but it's not going to weigh you down. All right, so don't underestimate uh, this category of blades. You can make little push cuts into wood. Now you say, why would you do that? Oh, many reasons. Uh, you can notch the wood like that. You can also make feather sticks with push cuts, very popular making feather sticks. Of course, this is just some scrap wood, you know, not the ideal wood for feather sticks, but get some, get some good wood and you can make feather sticks for your fire. So the push cut, another use of a blade like this, drilling divots. All right, a pointy tip is not just for battle, all right, but you can use it as a hand drill. See the little divots I just did here and you know, you're using it as a hand drill. You're using it as a hand drill like so, and you get the idea. You make these little divots and those are used for certain uh, methods of fire starting. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uses for little divots, so it is a hand drill. You can also baton like a small piece of wood. I don't usually find a need to do that too much, but you know, you can if you want to, want to make little kindling pieces or something, you can baton. Another basic job for a knife like this would just be cutting your cordage, you know? Um, in this. In this case, some whoa, some olive drab paracord, and you know it'll slide through it like butter. Uh, keep in mind, it does have a sharpening choil right there. Okay, so if you are cutting cordage, 
make sure you don't accidentally get it stuck in that sharpening choil. You know, but I like the sharpening choil. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, most of us sharpen our own knives. It's very useful. But yeah, cutting cordage, not the most glorious task, but uh, a practical task that you would do a lot. And another task for a knife like this would be skinning game. Okay, now remember when Jeff skinned a squirrel and got into trouble. I can't, uh, I, I can't legally go skin a squirrel, but I think you can see with, with the curvature of this and that polished edge, excellent skinning knife and also just food preparation at a camp. And, you know, slicing anything from apples to carrots to pieces of chicken. I think you could see you can also notch a piece of wood. This is a pretty sad piece of wood, but... Okay, so you just go like this. And you have a little notch like so. Or you push it in diagonally. You see the part that I batoned was there. Push it diagonally. That's a pretty sad little notch, but you get the idea. You can make a squared off notch or that type of notch. And then you can, you know, fit another piece of wood into the notch and make a trap or part of a shelter. Now this blade has a 90 degree spine, meaning these are 90 degree angles there and there. That is important for several reasons. Number one, you can scrape the bark, or scrape the bark off a limb if you needed to. It can also be used to strike a, a fire starter. Now you know most most spark makers already have a striker, so that's not necessarily you know mandatory. But a lot of people like to use their knife. Yeah, you see those see those sparks coming off it. And I like to hold fire starter with this kind of like a lanyard for better grip. But yeah, you can strike your steel there. Some people like to use the sharpening charl. I don't, but I have seen people do it that way. I like to use the spine. Okay, here is a useful size comparison for you. All right, we've got the battle horse knife right there. Now going from left to right, we have a Gerber Freeman, the S30V model. We have a Mora Triflex. Uh, and sorry, I don't know if you can see that with the glare because this has like almost a mirror polish. So let me just show that to you better there. All right, Mora knife, the battle horse knife. Then we have an Enzo knife in D2. Next we have a Hella knife from Norway. And next we have the kind of the budget uh, contender. It's a Kershaw antelope hunter. So you see knives in this size category are actually very popular for camping, hunting, and bushcraft chores, as I said before, because of the mix of ease of carry, but yet uh, large enough to do some real work. Okay, I hope you enjoyed seeing this blade, the large workhorse model from Battle Horse Knives. I have to give a special thank you to Battle Horse Knives. Uh, without them, this review, uh, you would not have seen this review. Now, I like to make my reviews, you know, short and sweet with a good pace and watchable. It's kind of a paradox because when a knife maker sends you a knife, oh man, if you made a 20 hour video, they would watch all 20 hours because in my experience, knife makers are so hungry for feedback about, about their item, always trying to improve. All right, but if you want the video to actually be watched, it's best to be short and sweet. So you do your job, I'll do mine. Never be offended if my video um, isn't excessively long. That's because I want more people to actually watch the video. This has been We All Juggle Knives. Check out Battle Horse Knives' website. It'll be in the description box. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out.